Several weeks ago, I reviewed the Innovato microcomputer and ham clock bundle from Innovato.com. As promised, in this video, we'll do a deeper dive into the information ham clock displays. Hamclock is a software app that not only works on the Innovato microcomputer, but also on Raspberry Pi computers. Regardless of where you run your version of Hamclock, what we talk about here still applies. As we get started, welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you need a more general overview of the Hamclock program, I'll leave a link to my previous review on the end card and in the description to this video. Besides having a really cool display for your ham shack, ham clock provides a bunch of customizable options that can give the ham operating in the HF bands some insight into how the bands are performing, as well as info on space weather and other scientific factors that impact our atmosphere. Let's get started by taking a look at the areas on the ham clock display that you can configure and what the various choices mean. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Here's a screenshot of the ham clock display. I'm going to label seven areas that give you choices in how you configure the display to meet your individual needs. The info comes from the Hamclock user manual that I'll link to below and from various websites, including the NOAA website and others that provide updates to these various data displays. For convenience, I'll label these areas as Panel 1, Panel 2, Panel 3, Panel 4, Panel 5, Panel 6, and Panel 7. Some of the display choices are the same for different panels, and in some cases, they're not. Let's start with panel one. This panel is also called the DE panel. It shows information about where you are. You can choose to display all the info seen here, or just an analog clock, a calendar, or another couple of time displays. It uses the info provided during setup to know what data to display. Panel 2 is also called the DX panel. It shows information about the destination. For example, it can show information about a place you click on in the main map display. This includes the time at that location, the latitude and longitude, the grid square, as well as sunrise, sunset, and distance to that point. When clicking in the upper left corner, you can select from a long list of satellites or the International Space Station. Then the display will show the track and when the satellite will come into view. Panels 3, 4, and 5 are the large panels across the top. These panels can display a variety of data elements and the choices are the same among these panels. Let's look at each choice and what the information tells us. The ADIF choice allows you to display the last 1000 QSOs listed in the ADIF file that you chose during setup. Linking to an ADIF file is not required. BZBT shows the magnetic field near the Earth's in nanoteslas. The BT shows the overall strength of the magnetic field. The BZ indicates field direction and plays an important role in the formation of the northern lights. When the IMF or interplanetary magnetic field flips south, the BZ indicates a negative number indicating the solar winds are entering the atmosphere in larger amounts. This increases the chance of auroras happening. BZ impacts radio wave absorption with negative scores having higher absorption rates. 
Some studies have shown that the overall impact is minor when compared to some of the other atmospheric conditions. If you're into contesting, the contest choice will display current and upcoming contests. The DE and DX weather choices display the weather conditions at the DE and DX locations you've chosen. This includes the temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, wind speed, and sky conditions. DRAP, or D-Region Absorption Product, is the NOAA measure that deals with the impact of solar X-ray flux and solar energetic particle, or SEP, on the HF radio communications bands. D-layer absorption occurs in the lower layers of the atmosphere. The D-layer and the ionization that drives this is considered a daytime phenomenon. DRAP impacts lower frequencies to a higher extent than higher frequencies. The number shows the computed highest frequency where at least 1 dB of attenuation occurs. This data is important to hams who focus on DX and want a good understanding of what the bands will be like. A couple of other choices relate to this and we'll get to them in just a minute. The live spot choice shows spots received from whispernet.org, pskreporter.info, or riversbeacon.net. You can choose several options when using Whisper or PSK, including reports from your call sign and others' call sign from your grid. This info can help you better understand propagation from your location. POTA and SOTA spots are exactly what you think they are. These choices show the latest spots for those hunting POTA and SOTA contacts. If you have configured ham clock for a rotator and rig control, tapping on the spot will change frequencies and turn your beam toward that spot. I've not used this feature, so feel free to comment below on how well this has worked for you. The SDO choice shows current images from the Solar Dynamics Observatory satellite. Azimuth, elevation, time of next rise or set, and radial velocity where positive values indicate motion away from the observer are the numbers in this panel's corners. You can tap near the center of the image to display a submenu that allows you to choose several images or options or you can rotate among them all. The solar wind choice shows a 24-hour history of solar wind activity. You can use solar wind as a good predictor of geomagnetic disturbances such as auroral activity and unusual polar HF propagation. The space weather option shows the three main NOAA space weather scales. Those scales are R for radio blackout, S for solar radiation storms, and G for geomagnetic storm. The left column is for the current conditions, and the columns to the right are predictions for each of the next three days. Each element is rated from 0 to 5, with 5 being the highest. The higher the number, the more likely that space weather may cause what NOAA calls a noticeable public impact. The sunspot number choice shows the number of sunspots reported by the Solar Influences Data Center. The scale shows the plot for the past 30 days. VOCAP stands for Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. This display provides propagation predictions in the HF bands. The VOCAP display shows the signal reliability in each listed band. Black indicates less than 10% reliability. Red equals less than 33%. Yellow equals less than 66%. And green indicates greater than 66% reliability. The elements across the bottom of the display can be changed. 
by changing things like power, takeoff angle, short or long paths, you can update the predictions for your situation. The latest versions of ham clock also include display choices for planetary K, solar flux, and X-ray. The planetary K display shows the KP values going back seven days and forecasts for the next two days. The KP scores are arranged in five ascending levels with G1 being minor and G5 being extreme. These are the same as the geomagnetic storms. The solar flux display shows the current 10.7 centimeter measurement from the National Research Council of Canada. As with sunspot number, the graph shows the results from the past 30 days and a three-day forecast. The planetary K and solar flux scores can help you predict good HF propagation. Solar flux above 150 with K scores below 2 for a couple of days normally indicates good HF band conditions. These quite technical displays show the power of ham clock. If you're big into contests or chasing DX, you can see how these displays can provide insight into band conditions. The last thing we'll mention for these panels is X-ray. The choice shows the current solar X-ray levels and flare class from the GOES-16 satellite. Panel 6 is a small panel that can display a couple of composite information sets for quick reference. The NCDFX beacons transmit once every three minutes, 24 hours a day, every day. The name refers to the Northern California DX Foundation that provides the data. Tuning these beacons can help give you an insight into band performance at any particular time. The Space Weather Choice displays several of the measures we've already discussed. This choice gives you a quick summary of space weather for those of you who are skilled in interpreting those measures. The last two choices allow you to display either DE or DX weather summaries. As I think I mentioned before, you can choose multiple displays for panels 3 through 6, and the displays will change or rotate through the choices you've made. Now, I find this a pretty cool feature, but at the same time, I also find it kind of distracting when there are screen changes when I'm focused on something else. Obviously, it's a personal preference. The last panel is the large map display. I covered this panel in my previous ham clock review, and the functions are pretty self-explanatory. Let me encourage you to view my previous video, which I'll link below and in the end card. If you're still with me, thank you so much. As you've seen, the ham clock display is a lot more than just a cool piece of ham shack art. It's crammed full of important information that hams who have a serious interest in HF propagation will find very helpful. Whether chasing DX or just keeping up with the ebbs and flows of the atmosphere, the display panels in Ham Clock provide an easy way to access this data. For the rest of us, well, it's pretty cool Ham Shack art too. Be sure to join me over here for my initial review of the Innovato microcomputer and ham clock. If you haven't subscribed to the Gadget Talk channel, please do, and be sure to click the thumbs up button below the video. Thanks for watching, and 73.